Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and uh, today I've got a, a customer that sent me a, a little picture of a little plastic part that they're they're working on, and they're having a little bit of a problem with uh, this little edge fillet in here. And so there's two two of these. They're supposed to be symmetric, and uh, he sent me a side view. So we got kind of a little radius curve there, and kind of a we'll call that the front view there. And so what I've done is I've kind of started out with uh, this part. I went ahead and put some draft on this, so I have to pull it from a mold. And so what we have to do is we have to kind of figure out uh, where does this thing begin. Now we could do this with fillets. So I could just select on this guy, go ahead and put a fillet on there, and let's make it like a uh, half inch or something. And that can totally work, but uh, it depends on what the manufacturing process is that they're doing to, to create this thing. Uh, if I look straight at this view, then you can kind of see that they would be taking an end mill and cutting across that flat, and that's what would create that. Now in this case, that's not exactly what they want. So let's go ahead and delete that guy. And so the issue is we need to uh, create, well we need to tell it where the, uh, the actual curve is gonna start, and then we also need to tell where that curve is gonna end. So the first thing I've done is gone ahead and created a little sketch, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this a little bit, make it a little bit bigger put it at 60 degrees in there and I'll go and do 60 on this side. So this kind of thing is we need to look at the drawing or the, the picture and we need to figure out about where is that start location. So we have a flat somewhere in here and we want to also make sure that the angle that we're doing is going towards the center of the part. So if we're starting with a fourth axis, axis machine then I can point the tool directly at the axis and go ahead and start out this at the very front. Now the problem with fourth axis is that when I end up, I'm not going to be centered on the center axis. I'm going to be offset on that. So I, I'm going to have a, a weird little radius curve as I come around and then come into that flat. So the best thing to do is just kind of map it out in 2D as far as what you want. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, use this sketch and let's, uh, let's go ahead and pre-select it. So that way when we do a split line, select on that face, we'll just say OK. And now what's happened is it's split that guy up into uh, three separate faces. So that way I can select on them a little bit easier. Okay, the next thing I need to do is tell it where, so this is where the start point of that is. Now I need to tell it where to end. So I'm just going to sketch on this face. Rotate around just a little bit. And there's a little bit of a, a unique thing is that uh, because it looks like this is a straight line, um, but if I convert it, let's take a look at it. Notice it's an ellipse. And the reason is because this is on an arc. And when I make that cut, it's actually a humongous ellipse out there. So um, I may not to really use this line. I could, and that is the actual edge. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just draw two more lines in here. I'm gonna make sure that those are perpendicular. And then we'll go ahead and pull this guy down to here. Lock him in. Straighten him up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and make sure that this guy. So the other issue is uh, it may be a little bit more difficult to get the same ellipse that that thing's coming in. So we're going to do something a little different. Let's go ahead and close, discard that sketch. And uh, I am going to need a surface off of this thing that kind of comes up to where I can trim off this. You'll kind of understand it in just a bit. And then I also need this uh, back face as well. So here's what I'm going to do before I actually do any of this stuff. You can see this solid face right there. Uh, if you don't have the surface ribbon, then just uh, right click on any of these ribbons right there and just turn on surfaces. And every SOLIDWORKS uh, product has that. And we're going to do an offset surface. I'm going to select on that face and I'm going to offset at zero. So there we go. And then next I need the inside of this surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and steal that and do offset surface. And uh, zero as well, it does a copy surface. I'm going to turn off my solid bodies. There is, so you can kind of see what I've got. I need to extend this on up because the draft as it goes up goes back. So I'm going to do an extend. And I need to extend this in two different directions here. And let's go ahead and make it pretty big. And I want to do same surface. That way it's nice and smooth. Okay, hopefully that'll give us enough to uh, to come off of there. So let's go ahead and turn on our solid body again. There we go. And that, that does, that goes up the wall quite a bit. 
So now I can do this. I can go ahead and do a new sketch. And then I can use this, uh, this edge. Um, or I could do kind of an intersection. Pick it. There we go. Convert it into these. Then I need this edge, which also is going to be an ellipse. So I'm going to do, uh, instead of convert, I'm going to do an intersection curve. And I, all you got to do is select on that face. And you'll see that curve there. And then I could use that to actually control where that comes out. So we kind of need to look at the uh, this thing and measure, you know, from the top down, figure out where that location is. And then uh, that's, that's where that guy needs to live. Um, but I'll just go ahead and use that for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn off our surface body so you can kind of see the sketch. There we go. We'll go ahead and steal that guy. Turn that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line in here. Make sure it's vertical there. I think I missed it, so let's pick it. There we go. And then we can go ahead and trim off uh, the outside of these things. Oops. So it doesn't look like that goes all the way over. Let's drag it and make sure it does. There we go. And 2017, we got a solid profile there, so that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and put a dimension on it. And let's make it 0.85 is R of 0.8 is good. All right, so same thing. We're going to do a uh, split. So insert, curve, split line. And we're going to split that surface. So I'll just right click, say OK. And so now I can select that guy completely separate than the rest of the, the surface space there. So now I need to actually do a little bit of surface work. Uh, I'm going to take this solid and convert it into a surface just by doing delete face. So we'll go ahead and select on both those faces. Uh, if you just do a delete, now I've converted this solid body to a surface model. And you see it's kind of missing those, those areas in there. So now all I need to do is uh, do a loft from one surface or one surface edge to the other. So we'll go just do a lofted surface. And I'll select the uh, same kind of thing with the loft. If I pick over here on the left side of that edge, and I also need to pick on this left side of the edge. If I can pick it right. go so that looks good you can see the little connection points are correct uh, then I need to do some start and end constraints so my start constraint is going to be uh, tangency to face so you kind of see it's coming down so that's perfect as my end mill is coming off of that surface then it's going to start to rotate as I rotate the part around then I need to come up tangent to this second constraint there we go so that looks pretty good. Uh, we can play with this little weighted amount here. So we'll put a two in there. You can see what it's doing now is it's uh, twice the amount of the, uh, the length of that going down. I'll put two here, then that's gonna make a really tight curve. Let's see how that works. So I'm just gonna leave them both at one. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll say okay. So now that we have that, sometimes when it does that, it, it kind of tends to uh, to pull that thing inward a little bit and doesn't keep it out with the outside of that surface. So I do want this surface to actually go out a little bit more and in a little bit more. So I'm just going to do an extend surface. Go ahead and select on both the inside and the outside. That looks good. Make sure you have it on the same surface. And I really don't need a whole lot. Uh, point 0.1 looks pretty good. So I'll say OK to that. All right, and then uh, we can turn on these other surfaces here. So we can show that surface and that one. And so now you can kind of see all I really need in here is these other uh, little edges in there. Now, to make it a little bit easier uh, for these faces inside here, uh, I'm gonna go back in time just a little bit, right before I did the, uh, the delete face. And let's go ahead and turn these guys off real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal both of these. I'm going to go and do them both at the same time. So we're going to do an offset surface at zero. There we go. And then if I turn this guy off, let's go ahead and go all the way down to the bottom. 
turn the rest of these guys back on. You can kind of see that now I'm starting to get a little closed in area. So there's a couple different ways I could do this. Um, I could use trim surface to kind of go about doing that, but there's a new one. New tool called uh, Intersect. If we go to, uh, it's actually under Features, and do Intersect. And then we can uh, select on the different surfaces. And that guy. And you hit the Intersect. And you can kind of see what it's doing is it's taking those surfaces and stitching it into to a solid. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit old school. And the reason is, uh, I've got the other surface body that's sitting out there, this delete face that's got a lot of the uh, surfaces. So I'm going to do this a little bit a little bit old school. So really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim all this stuff up. I'm actually going to hide this one so I don't accidentally select that. And we're just going to do a trim surface. So I'm going to do a mutual trim. I'm going to use uh, this guy and this back inside area there. It's my trim surface. And then I'm going to tell it to keep this little inside and it doesn't look like that's going to work for me uh, occasionally we do have to extend those surfaces out just a little bit so let's go ahead and uh, turn these guys off and I'm going to go ahead and extend this and also extend it out just a little bit more Go. And then we can turn these two guys back on. I'm going to go and knit um, these two together. So we got one knitted surface body. Then when we do a uh, trim, we can just select on that individual body. And then I'm going to tell it to keep these insides. In fact, I think I could do it all together. Uh, we'll go ahead and select the offset. Let me pick them out of the browser tree. Sometimes that's a little bit easier. Do mutual. Here we go. There, there, and there. So I'm picking all three. Then I tell it what I want to keep. I want to keep this inside there. I want to keep the inside there, and the inside there. And you kind of see it removes it. Uh, there is a little option so I can actually see what I've got, which is good. And there's a new checkbox in 2017. I can go ahead and create the solid with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it undone. There we go. So that's what I've got. But if you remember, uh, on the uh, surface delete, we turn him on, turn him off. You kind of see what I have is that little gap in there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those on there and then. Uh, And go ahead and delete these faces. There we go. We'll go ahead and turn on this guy. And then I just need to knit this guy into this way. Now there's a couple of other ways I could have done it, make it a little bit faster. Uh, so let's go ahead and knit these surfaces. Tell it to create a solid. It knew that there's a solid geometry. And if you did it right, then uh, it should look pretty good. And kind of rotate around. If you look straight at that, that's going towards the axis, and then that fourth axis is kind of kind of roll up that little sidewall face. And the last thing you could do, if, if again, if you've kind of done this right, you could do delete face. Go ahead and delete both of those. Do it on delete and patch. And what that'll do is that'll kind of get rid of that little that little edge in there, make it a little bit smoother looking. So hopefully you enjoyed that. It was a pretty complex little thing. Uh, and of course you got to kind of do it on the other side at the same time. I don't know if that will actually mirror or not. But I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.